Okay, so the background is a mess and I'm wearing a t-shirt that's older than I am, but we're gonna do this here and now. Welcome back to my channel, or hi if you're new, I'm Anna Mae. And recently, due to probably some of the stressors in my life, um, you know, the ongoing panoramic and lockdowns, and they're being released now in Ireland, but I still have nowhere to go, no job. I have taken to the sewing machine in my stress. So I've been working on a couple different sewing projects and I'll probably be showing them over the next couple of weeks on my channel. But today's video, as you can probably see from the title, is a refashion video. So I have just refashioned, sitting on my lap here, a vintage Lily Pulitzer romper. So the exact age of this romper, we're not sure. Um, it could be any time from pretty much the establishment of the brand to I think maybe the 1980s. Um, it does have the original The Lily tag, I'll insert it here and I'll show you, I'll insert maybe here or over top of me talking, the original item. So I bought this item on eBay maybe two or three years ago. Uh, it was labeled as a US 8, which would be somewhere around a UK 12, I think, which would be around my typical size for something that has to cover my lower half. I'll put the measurements of the item on screen at some point, um, because it is labeled as a typical US 8, um, and it does fit me quite well, except for the fact that clearly the waist had been taken up. So the waist part of it had, it, the finish, I think I say this in other clips, was just not the same as other Lily Pulitzer items that I own. I'm a big fan of the brand. Um, and there was also no tape, lace tape. I don't know if that's due to the age of the item, um, but there was none of that tape. And also in the hem, I mean, and the hem looked like it had been done by someone who was maybe not a professional. I will definitely say that the US 8 sizing to begin with was probably very much in the vintage sizing. Um, and then because it does fit me pretty well up top um, and the ruching on the side, the elastic's completely gone. It has just been seemingly, I think, like stitched maybe in place or it's just, it's just like cord now at the side. So it's pretty much at its full extension. And then as I said, the waist had been taken up and up and up. So I'm only five foot three, um, like at a max, I'm 160 centimeters. Um, so <laughs> the fact that it actually did not cover my butt cheeks it did not cover the full extent of my butt. Uh, trying to use words so I don't get demonetized. There was a there. There was way too much visible. It did have lining shorts, um, and I just removed those because they were so fine, like they were so worn, so fragile. They just weren't going to work. So I think I show some of the steps of what I'm doing, and I guess I'll just talk through it, and then I'll like you know cut in and out where I have done things, but I didn't record the whole process just because I really didn't know what I was doing. I was flying by the seat of my pants, which is what I do most of the time when I'm sewing. So jumping right in, the first thing I did was unpick the whole skirt section. I unpicked from the waist everything down and I left the zip intact. So I have photos, I have videos of that. Um, I just unpicked most of, you know, everything that I wanted to remove was gone and it was actually pretty easy to unpick. I had to be careful because the fabric is quite fragile because it is an older item. Uh, so I was very ca conscious of that the whole time, but it unpicked really well. Um, and I had quite a bit of fabric to work with. So then I think I have clips of, you know, my main idea, which was that I was going to basically double my fabric length by cutting the strips in half lengthways. So they would be half as long and twice as wide. So is this an exact like really well-made garment? Is this the kind of proportions you'd want? Is it the same angles? Absolutely not. But we're not starting from scratch. We're starting from this item. I cannot add extra fabric. We're doing what we can with what we have. So I decided to go with that plan. And those are, these are those clips. Right now I'm about to try and figure out how to create a peplum ruffle situation for this top which is not a top it's a the cut off romper the top stayed very much like intact when i unpicked it so that is good um the fabric is definitely pretty fragile uh, even though it is cotton it's still very thin very worn um although the color difference i'll show you from 
the outside to the inside isn't huge, which surprised me um, because it is very faded. I thought maybe it was sun faded, but it's not. So I think I'm just going to visually show you what I'm going to do. And um, I didn't bring my tripod, so I won't be able to do any time lapses. But basically, this is one of the skirt panels. And I feel like I feel really bad. I'm sure I've gone through this already, but I do feel bad, um, like kind of hacking at an older item um, and turning it, like I like to keep things as they are and just restore them, but for this I am very much changing it. But as I've probably already said, there have been a lot of alterations made to this garment already. So where I detached it, I'm fairly certain because of, um, the standard I've seen, even though this is an older garment, but the standard I see in some of the other seams, like here, right, the finish on some of the seams, um, and also sewn with white or an off-white thread, which is what I'm going to be using, like a creamy, um, like a, with a peach undertone off-white thread, versus the bright orange, which I think some of the orange, like the very bright orange, is, sorry, I was just interrupted there. So some of the other parts that, so the waist area was definitely altered. Um, I don't know if it was to take up the shorts or the skirt or both, I think it was both. And um, because the seams, I don't think I have any photos or anything. It was, it was raw, <laughs> like someone just hacked that. Um, and then like they did, I'm not saying that I'm gonna be doing a fantastic job when it's all together, but it was looking really rough. It was definitely not, um, typical lily standard and then someone did like a really good job of hemming this like the hand old-fashioned way but again I highly doubt this is the original and there's also no tape there's none of the lace tape which I don't know what date that started but um it doesn't have any of the original hem I don't believe so um even though a lot of lily hems are done like this I'm just not sure if this is necessarily Lily bullets are hand stitching quality. So um, I should get into the plan. So the plan is because this attaches fully, I will have the measurements on screen here if I can of what the you know different measurements for the garment are. But it says it's a US 8, but again, we don't know how old this garment is and most sizes are arbitrary. Also, the elastic's pretty much gone out of the ruching on the side, so. It kind of changes things um so because it only fits about here it won't give me a ruffle even though I'm adding maybe about four or five inches from across the front I should have taken that measurement beforehand um but what I intend on doing is to basically cut this in half this way and have made basically double the length of my panels and then I'm going to keep this hem I'm just the fabric is so fine I'm not going to risk taking it out but I am going to add like a hem like seam basically that will be consistent along all of the things all of the panels and then I intend to attach them back to the zip and I'm going to fix the zip then um when I start to deal with that area because the zip actually I think is another area that may have been mm, not messed with but a little bit there was a lot of thread going on in that area um so I kept it's just a regular nylon zip so I kept it here for the minute and when I get to this stage I will probably just insert like clips and photos of what it looks like eventually but um it obviously won't be well, it might be just as long, but I actually just finished another project today where I had to shorten a zip and I'm pretty okay with doing that now. And I should have a little bit of extra fabric if I need to, to put like a little flap over the end of it or something. But I'm going to keep the zip down the back and I'm going to attach the two panels to that. I'm not, I'm going to like match them at the sides, but I'm not going to do necessarily front and back. I'm going to do one long one so that I don't have seam down the middle, if that makes sense. It might not. Also, there's gonna be a lot of blemishes, not blemishes, but like different situations, like there's some seams here. They're just gonna stay. It's gonna be roughly, you're not gonna notice. We're doing what we can with what we can. So that's my update. 
that's what I'm doing, that's the original plan, and let's see if that's what happens. So that plan worked. I have a clip here of me holding the strip, uh, trying to give an example of how long it really is, and when you see how roughly the top is, you would probably be like, oh yeah, I definitely didn't need all through all four of the panels that I ended up with, because I had like, from the front to the back zip, and then from the crossover to the back zip, as two big panels and then cut in half. So I had so much fabric. So it was much longer than I am tall. It was over a meter 60 long, that's for sure. Um, it was very, very long. From that point, I don't have any more clips that I was recording because it all just kind of happened. I did a large type of kind of basting stitch and I just did one, I know typically you do two. I just did one um, because I didn't have that much fabric to work with and I was a bit ca cautious of it. I did hem it all um, and I, hemmed over the original hem so that it was consistent between all four strips when they were attached. So I was able to gather that pretty easily because it's so light, it, it gathered very well. And I just gathered it as you typically would to the measurement that I needed from the back zip to the other back zip. I did it as one consistent strip and I used my clover clips. They are the best thing ever, wonder clips. If you sew, you don't have wonder clips, you need to get some, they're so helpful. Um, and I stitched it in place. Things got a little bit more complicated when I had to try and fix it to the zip because the zip was still hanging down. Thankfully only earlier that day I've been working with uh, more nylon zips and shortening them and things. So I used, I had a tiny little section of fabric that I had got from somewhere else from trimming stuff that was really raggy and like ripping. And I used that to create a little tab at the end of the zip after I shortened it to the new length of the top, which I will show you in a moment. And um, then I just stitched it down. I just realized that there's loads of loose threads, but that's just how it is. So that's me talking through the whole process. I hope there were some clips thrown in here. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would see my reel. Follow me at Anime by Design. Um, I made a little transformation reel. But here is the top. So it's really cute, it's really ruffly. Um, I did leave the boning in. That was something I had considered taking out because it is a vintage item. It does have boning, but um, it fits me in the chest pretty well, which is kind of unusual for me. So I decided to keep it as is and I just, I love the neckline details if you can see. Uh, the pleats at the neckline. So the straps already had buttons and were adjustable, um, which was nice. And as I said, the ruching doesn't even stretch. So uh, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, the hemline is not consistent, but I didn't expect it to be given my methods. Um, but now it's a wearable item. And before it wasn't a wearable item, I didn't even feel confident reselling it. That's really why I decided to refashion it instead, because the sizing saying that it's I believe it's a US 8 really was not doing anything for anyone I could have given garment measurements but the the inseam was so short it was just bizarre a little look at the zip I'm just holding it upside down I just have maybe about an inch of open fabric at the back because it's so pleated and ruffly and it's a summer top it kind of really hides itself and I attach the zip as you would normally I did keep the what do you call that panel at the back of the zip so that it's not zipped directly against my skin. I managed to keep that um, from the original garment as well. So the zip functions fabulously. I didn't have to buy any new zip, which was really good, um, and install a whole new zip that would have been difficult because as I said, the fabric is not super, not super strong right now, but I think it looks so cute. I will probably be inserting more photos here or follow me on Instagram to see more photos of it. But I think this is what I would regard as a successful refashion. I love the orange lining fabric. Um, it was the same lining as the shorts and I did consider putting it underneath the ruffle, but it, it's just a bit brighter than the outside fabric now. So that is it. Uh, this was, I feel like I just talked and talked and talked um, because I, did um but i'm really happy with this item i think it was a really successful refashion i'm trying to you know alter some of the things i already have that just don't work for me um instead of just donating them or selling them and finding a new one i'm just trying to work with what i have so i hope this inspired you in some way subscribe to my channel if you want to see more sewing videos more lifestyle fashion 
whatever is happening kind of videos. Um, hopefully, you know, someone employs me soon. That'd be great. Um, but right now I'm going to make a pair of pajamas. Um, so follow me on Instagram to see that. Like this video if you think this was a pretty cute refashion or leave a comment down below if you think I just destroyed a vintage clothing item. I mean, I'm willing to fight you on this and I will see you in my next video.